when one turns to the Lord, have you ever heard a Trinitarian call the Holy Spirit the Lord? Most Trinitarians don't use that lingo. We don't talk that way when we're talking about the Holy Spirit. But when, since we believe that God is a triune God, then it's not unusual or wouldn't be unnatural, I suppose, to refer to the Holy Spirit as Lord. But Paul here says, when one turns to the Lord, which most of us think and equate with turning to Yeshua. And indeed, that is, I believe, what Paul's trying to um, get at. Turning to the Lord means turning to Yeshua. Because Paul is going to state in other places emphatically that salvation is exclusive to turning to Yeshua. You cannot express genuine faith in God as your God minus Yeshua as Lord and be counted by Paul as a genuine believer. Understand what I'm saying there? Genuine Christianity or genuine um, believer status is afforded to those who turn to Yeshua as Lord. So it's really, really interesting that Paul says when one turns to the Lord, meaning Yeshua, the Lord is removed. And then if we remove that little verse number 17, just remember Paul didn't put the little number there. He says, now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. I mean, wow, that verse makes your head spin. In verse 16, is he talking about Yeshua? The answer must be yes. In verse 17, when he says Lord there, in verse 17, when he says the Lord, if he's still talking about Yeshua, then why does he say that Yeshua is the Spirit, right? Is it the Spirit of Messiah? I guess so. And then he said, where the Spirit of the Lord Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. If Unitarians want to claim right in the previous verse, the Spirit of the living God or the Spirit of the Lord, if the Spirit of the Lord is God, well, then why is the Spirit of the Lord being equated as Yeshua here, right? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. We know, and I'll close with this, we know as Christians that genuine freedom can only come about when one surrenders to Yeshua as Lord. Therefore, you know that these verses are speaking of our relationship with Yeshua and referring to him as Lord. But how is it that Paul can bring in this discussion that Jesus is that Spirit? The Lord is the Spirit? I thought Yeshua still had a physical body. How is it that he's the spirit? Okay, so we'll pick up that discussion next week. But that's the challenge that we're left with. Um, Just be aware that when we're having discussions on the issues of Trinity, we've got to let the Bible speak for itself. If the Bible gives us challenging language to chew on, then let's just chew on it. We might not be able to fully understand it at the time, but we've got to admit that the Bible requires us to study it in its context, and it requires us to study it in its entirety. We cannot and must not take and isolate verses away from the context and form theology based on one single context or one single um, passage. And to that end, I think the Trinitarian model captures the best use or makes the best use of that particular um, advice of looking at the Bible in the, its broader context context. I think in my position, in my experience with working with Unitarians, there's more limiting of context when it comes to um, uh, citing passages for that particular position. But that'll do it for uh, exploring the Shema discussions on the issues of Trinity. Thank you.